thirsty. So Jasmine, back here. <laughs> Seinfeld. Right back here. Uh, Congratulations on the win tonight. Obviously, uh, a stellar performance. Just first and foremost, talk to us about finally getting to fight at home in Toronto and your thoughts on the fight. You know, it's been... It was really cool being able to fight in Toronto. I, uh, my hotel room, I could see from the window there the ice rink with the Toronto sign. And I would always just like sit at the window and eat my food and look at the sign. And I know that sounds silly, but I did <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was, it, it was nice because it always reminded me, like, you know, I'm at home, I'm fighting at home. My, my daddy was a, a firefighter here. He retired as a firefighter in the Runnymede area. And um, so Toronto's like a special spot for me. We would come here with my family and we would go to like, the, my parents would take us out of school. We'd go to this dim sum restaurant up here for Chinese New Year. Like, you know, Toronto's a special spot for me. And to be able to fight at home with my friends and family coming and, um, you know, being able to see, I heard I got a 10-7 round and to do that in front of my, my friends and family, it's like, you know, I, it, I don't know. Best night of my life, man. 10-7 round, 281 strike discrepancy. Uh, after two rounds, the strikes were 20, 228 to 4. Were you aware, obviously you knew you were, you were winning the fight, but we, were you aware of how big the discrepancy was, how far ahead you were? No, I, uh, I, I wasn't aware. It's like Je Jelly said to me, don't admire any of your work. Like, just go in there and, and hit your shots, hit them hard. And then after the fight, watch the fight. And you know, that really like sat with me. And I'm like, yeah, man, you know, that's exactly what I need to do. Just go in there and fight, do, do my best, do my work. And then afterwards, I'll, I'll be able to watch the fight and enjoy what I did. So the entire time that I was in there, I was, I was just trying to beat her up, man. It pissed me off, that weight discrepancy, man, the thing that she did with the weight, man, pissed me off so much. And uh, so, the first round, I, I just wanted to, to torture her a little bit, like, be a professional, like, come on, we agreed to this wait so long ago. Just, so, yeah, fits me off. <laughs> we, we talked a little bit about it yesterday, but uh, if this is any other card other than Toronto, do you still accept this fight? Yeah. Well, I did the gab. I'm fighting yeah, 100%. I, if I sign my name on a dotted line to fight, I'm fighting. I don't care. What, like, how big is she going to be? She normally fights at 125. I just think she sucks at cutting weight. Like, I'm <clears throat> okay, 10 pounds. Who cares? I train with girls that are 10 pounds every year. I've, I've been to all uh, different gyms in the world, and I, I'm always being matched up with the, the 35ers instead of the 15ers, even though I'm a 25er. So it's like... I'm used to it. I, I, I don't care. I'll, I'll take the, this same fight anywhere. Did she say anything after the fight as to what happened, why she missed, or give an apology, anything? I don't think she speaks much English. Maybe, she, maybe her coaches, but I didn't talk to them, so I, I have no idea. And last one for me. I mean, <laughs> normally a fighter misses weight, they get fined, you pick up a percentage. This was renegotiated, so did you get anything extra in terms of the UFC for, for taking this? Yeah, so even though we are doing another weight class, it's still I'm still getting the the 30 per, I get 30 percent because this isn't her first mass. So the the max that they allow is in Ontario is 30 percent. I honestly I wish it was more because it's another weight class. It's not like it's three pounds, five pounds. It's a whole new weight class. So, but you know what? Whatever. I'll take the 30 percent and I'll uh, buy something nice. Well, congrats on the win in that now a winner in three weight classes. Yeah, crazy. Look at that. I eh? fought at 15, 25, and 35 now. Jasmine, over here, how, you mentioned being pissed, rightfully pissed off at, at what happened with the weight cut. How did you keep your emotions in check? Because you have this big moment. I'm sure you want to enjoy it, experience everything. How did you keep things in check? Um, because exactly what I was pissed off at her about being a professional, that's what I had to do in this fight. I, I, I know if I get pissed off and fight emotionally and I get into a fight or fight with her, that's what she wants. That, that's how I could potentially lose this fight. So it's like one finger's pointing at her and three pointing back if I do that. So it, it's the same thing that I'm being frustrated at her about. I have to hold myself accountable as well. Anything about her surprise you? 
No, I expected the eye gouging, the fish hooking, all the shit that she was doing. I, I expected it all. <laughs> And uh, first finish, uh, you know, in a couple of years, I mean, th that's got to feel good too. Like, th I mean, this really kind of worked out it, it, probably as good as it could other than maybe like a quick finish. But even then, you got some more time to enjoy the time in the octagon, right? Honestly, it's, it really did work out better than I expected. Because, yeah, I did have the crazy strike differential. Dif whatever. Differential, yeah. Differential. But in addition, got the finish on top of it. So it's like... It, in my very first wrestling tournament, I was like about to tech the girl and then I pinned them as well. So it, it, it's like that, it's a, the, the cherry on top. And just last one for me, where does a win put you? I mean, this was a really dominant victory. Um, you know, you fought an opponent that like, you know, was probably stronger, but heavier than you tonight. Um, where do you feel this puts you in the grand scheme of things? Um, I, I'm not too sure. I honestly, I was like, just looking at this fight and, um, you know, hopefully I get back up and I can get like a ranked opponent sometime soon. Maybe not if if not next fight, whatever fight after. But I, I want to be active. I want to continue to to fight. I, I really believe in my skills and abilities. I I've trained with girls the the best in the world and you know up up in that range. And I I really I truly know where I stand with them. And so as long as I don't make any silly mistakes, as as long as I fight the right, the, the fights the right way, um, you know, I, I can be the best in the world. I, I truly believe it, that, that the the belt can, can be in my hands. Jasmine, right here. Um, you took basically no damage in this fight, but I was noticing your hands. It almost looks like you were in a bare knuckle fight. Um, how are you feeling physically after such a dominant win? I feel good, you, you know, luckily I got tough hands. I got a bunch of mat burn on my legs, but you know, that, that it'll sting in the shower, but the glory of winning, it has nothing on, on any of this. Of all your wins as a pro in the UFC, this really feels like it was your breakout. I mean, such a dominant win, the records in Toronto. Do you agree? I agree 100%. You know, the the match or uh, the batters had me as like a, the biggest favorite on the card. And that was an inspiration to me to, to show them like, you know what, you guys are right. I, I should be the biggest favorite. I want to show you guys that you made the right decision on that one. <laughs> when you dominate someone as badly as you did tonight, I mean, do you do you still relish in all that? Or as a human, even even as a fighter, are you kind of thinking, oh, this really was brutal. This is kind of crazy. I, you know, <laughs> being able to like fight, you have to shut that off. You have to shut emotion off. You have to shut those those things off. And it's like weird on like fight week. I don't know. This is this is just how I feel. I don't know others, but I feel like you you go through this kind of like transition that you accept that you have to hurt another person. And it's not a natural thing to like want to hurt another person, but you have to like compartmentalize and not see them as, a, as another like human being and just go out there and understand that you have a job to do. And like, this is my livelihood. This is like, yeah, of course I, I have to torture this girl in the, in the cage because this is, you know, my job. This is what I, what I have to do. Hey, Jazz, just over here, thank you. Um, so in that third round, you were on your knees, but you took that as an opportunity to shoot for her legs, and you got that submi submission finish. What were you thinking to make that moment an opportunity? And you've kind of talked about how you're, you're finding those opportunities. What kind of clicked and ultimately won you this fight? Uh, well, I was like, clearly dominant uh, with the grapplings so i knew i just got to get on this chick's leg and take take her down you know i i felt like her wrestling defense wasn't great and yeah to shoot to my my knee and just keep keep working at it you know it wasn't the cleanest shot but i knew as long as i got a hold of that uh, got a hold of her you know i could take her down i knew what i could do with her on top so you know i'll work on my uh my timing for the shots and stuff like that in the future. I'll round out my game a little bit more, but I knew I had to, to take this girl down and beat her up. 100%. And you mentioned earlier you wanted to put a show on for your hometown, and you definitely did that. How does it feel to be the first Canadian to get a win at the start of this uh, card? You know, it feels amazing. I uh, hope that the trend continues and, 
you know, the Canadians continue to win. At, at the very least, Mike and Siri, because I, I know that, uh, you know, we're, we're not doing the same as we did in Vancouver. But, you know, as long as my boys, that as long as they show well, then we're going to be having three weddings tonight. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jasmine, I was just wondering if you could tell us on Friday morning how you learned about how her weight cut was going. Did their team approach you? And, and how far along were you in terms of, like, how close you were? Were you able to at least stop cutting at a, at a certain point before you had to step onto the scale? Yeah, so it was like Friday afternoon that I heard about. I was like sitting there and then I saw the, my phone ring and it was Mick. I was like, ugh, no. We're going to see him call in on the day before way or the yeah, day before weigh-ins. It's, you know, it's bad. So I answer and I put the phone on speaker because the coaches were still there and He's like, yeah, Priscilla's having an issue cutting weight, and um, she's not going to make 125 pounds. <laughs> so I was just like, okay, um, I'm going to pass your number along to my coaches, and then they, they'll figure it out. Because, you know, I'm just here to fight. They're going to figure it out. I trust them wholeheartedly with every everything of my career. So I just gave a mixed number and they all went to lunch and I just stayed back and just laid down and kind of like didn't think about it because there's I know I'm fighting tomorrow or weighing in the next you know whatever at the time weighing in the next day and I know I'm fighting so whatever the weight may be let's just find out there was a point I said let's just go to our room put her on the scale whatever number it is we'll fight at that what like it was back and forth back and forth back and forth and then it was like i think seven eight o'clock at night the coach is just like yeah we're gonna just make it 135 because we don't know if sh we make it 132 or 33 and then she misses weight then the ontario commission might just be like not fights not happening so we're just like let's do it at 135 and then that way we know for sure she'll make weight and then so I just started eating and drinking again instead of, you know, continuing to cut. I just started refueling, trying to get myself back up. So coming in today, I think I was only 136 pounds. Like I thought I was going to be 125, you know, so wish I bulked up a little. I mean, probably can't tell that I didn't, but I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> And just about the second round, I mean, it was such a dominant round for yourself. Was there a point where you were s sort of getting frustrated that it, w that it wasn't being called off at this point because there seemed to be a, it's rare you see a 10-7 round because if you're getting to that point, the fight probably should be stopped. Yeah, um, I, I was like raining down those shots and I was like just riding that line of like, okay, I don't want to gas myself out because I made that mistake at Contender Series trying to get trying to finish a girl and, and gas myself out. So I've been through this. So I'm like, I'm not doing that again. But you know, I used a lot of gas, and so by the third, I was pretty exhausted. But uh, but yeah, you know, I I thought that maybe it should have got stopped. But I don't I don't know. I'm not the one watching it, and she was still moving like at the same time. So I. I kind of get it as well, and uh, you know, whatever it gave me more more opportunity to have more time time in the octagon. So that's the ultimately the most important part. Hi, Jasmine. Just one question right in front of you over here. Um, did you feel any of the benefits at all? As disappointing it was to hear that she wasn't going to make the weight uh, of not having to cut yourself. And do you see a move to 135 in, in the future after you're done with uh, with 125 business? Um. I honestly never really like thought about it, but I mean, I, obviously, I'm down to take any opportunity that presents itself. So maybe, probably not, but we'll see. Never know. Did any part of you think that Casuera's corner would stop the fight between the second and third rounds? Do you think they should have? I I don't know what they're thinking. I don't, I got my own thoughts. I got to try to keep track of what I'm thinking what someone else is thinking. I don't. <laughs> and really quickly, when in the post-fight interview, when someone like UFC Hall of Famer Daniel Cormier says this was one of the most dominant performances in UFC history, is that surreal to hear, or is that the kind of praise that when you come into the UFC you you expect? Uh, yeah, that was super cool. But you know, what was even cooler was when he came in because I have so much respect for like DC man like 
his wrestling pedigree and everything. Um, so when, when he came in and he like looked at me and went like that, that was the moment I'm like, yeah, what's up, man? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Big gulp, oh, big gulp. See you later. <laughs>